What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I hope you like this video. This is going to be your review for Married at First Sight, Season 12, Episode 12. So, I'm going to go couple by couple because that's just the easiest way to do this situation. These two-hour episodes, it, it's a lot, okay? But we're going to start with, let's start with um, Brianna and um, Vincent. Because they're probably going to be the easiest couple for me to talk about. And then I'll just go from there. So, we start this episode off, you know... Vincent is patting himself on the back for this wonderful date that he had planned um, for their one month anniversary. Child, Vincent, stop playing. Okay, production probably paid for it. And hell, production probably came up with the damn idea. But I'm going to let you have it that you came up with this really, really great um, date. It was nice. It was cute. Y'all had a good time. And now he's looking at, you know... Bree, like, where, where we going next? When you planning the date? And he starts talking about how he want to go to Disney World. He want to go to the moon. He want to go on safari in Africa. And, the you know, Serengeti. Like, he is coming up with all this stuff. And she was like, mm-hmm, okay. I was thinking more like dinner and a movie. Okay. Um, I could take you to see The Lion King. And we could look at, you know, the Sahara. But I don't know about all that. Um... Later on in the episode, we see where he bought her a bike. And I thought that was so sweet that, you know, he bought her a bike because, you know, he said that getting healthy is, I mean, being healthy and fitness is important to him. And he sort of fell off the wagon a little bit. And she said that she wanted to start, you know, doing things with him. And so he loves to ride bikes. And so they went on a bike ride and they came up with this bet, like if he won, you know, she had to do 50 push-ups or something like that. And if she won, then he had to do the dishes for a week. And I thought it was so cute because he he let her win. But not only was it that he let her win, but he made sure that she stayed in front of him at all times so that he could keep an eye on her and make sure she was okay, just in case something happened, just in case she ran out of steam, anything. And I just thought that was so sweet because even with the bet on the line, and he knew he was letting her win, and she understood it too. She she accepted that, and she was like, well, you know, um, because he let me win, she was like, we can do the dishes together, and I'll still do the push-ups. And instead of doing 20, I think she, had, she ended up doing five. But it was cute. It showed the compromise. It showed the relationship. Like, winning wasn't as important as making sure that she was safe. And knowing that she's not a big bike rider. And I thought it was cute that he bought her the bike to begin with. So, they're really, really cute together. Um... Later on in the episode, we see they go out on a double date with um, Jake and Haley, which, child, that's a whole nother situation. We could get to them. But, um, and I feel like they both gave Jake and Haley some really good advice in reference to just trying to work things out and work through their issues and working through their problems. There was another point where Vincent, they were having sort of a guy's night situation and Vincent was telling them like it's okay to admit you wrong you know it's okay to say hey I screwed that up hey I made a mistake um because of course he had to do that you know and he had to learn that you know he was sort of taking out on her some of his own insecurities and he had to eat it and so I, I'm, I'm here for it again you know, we saw a couple of other little clips of them doing some things around the house. They were putting a new shower head on. And just, I'm really enjoying watching this relationship grow. It's probably the only relationship of this season that I'm enjoying. Um, and I'm definitely, from the beginning, you guys know I have liked them from the beginning. And I'm definitely hoping that they're working, that, that it's still working for them. I really, really, really am. Um... Let me just go on and get into Jake and Haley. Now, listen, I know y'all feel like Jake and Haley is about to be a little complicated situation. It's not. Let me tell you what's going on with Jake and Haley, okay? Jake is shut down, shut off. He's done. Haley, I think, is still trying to go through the motions. But Haley ain't really feeling this. Haley has no interest in this working. I think... She has more of an interest in it not failing. If that makes sense, okay? But what Jake said last week when they were at dinner and he was like, I tell you what, let's just go on and get through these next couple of weeks and get our divorce and I'll never have to see you again and you'll never have to see me again. Like, I truly feel like that is where he is. Um, They do go out for go-karts. 
they're trying to have fun they're trying to do some other things um but then there was a point where they were having dinner and she cooked dinner for him and she's asking him all these questions and he's answering her questions but you know it was really truly a one-sided conversation it was just a one-sided conversation. It really was no engagement. Like, she was asking him about her, his past. She was like, you know, we've talked about our big relationships, but what about some of the smaller ones? Like, you know, the people you dated for a little while here and there. And, I mean, he answered her, but he could care less. It just, I think he has, I think he's done, you know. Later on, when they go on the double date with Vincent and Brianna, like, Haley is talking to Brianna and they're really trying like Bri you know Brianna's really trying to give her some great um you know some great advice and things like that and Vincent is talking to Jake and Jacob is just like listen listen this ship has sailed like I'm just gonna film I'm gonna fulfill my contract and I'm gonna go on back to my house with my beach in the backyard okay and I will find out listen I will make this listen I will figure out another way to do this it just ain't it just ain't it so in my mind this is a couple I would be shocked to see at the end of this they decided they're gonna stay together like I would just be really 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 shocked but I'm sure strange things have happened, but I really think Jacob or Jake is just, I think he's tapped out. I, I just think he's over it later on in the episode where the guys are having their little guys night situation. Um, they're trying to talk to him about, you know, compromising and all that kind of stuff. And he is so not here for it. He said, you know, he, he said, you know, he had his supplements on the counter and she has a problem with stuff being on the counter she likes clean counters and he took all she took all his vitamins and supplements and stuff and put them in the cabinet and she had them in one cast you know they was they was spread out throughout the kitchen and he was like can we just try to put them in like if you don't want them on the counter fine but can we put them in one location and she was like well i mean they won't f all fit here so i'm just putting them right here and he said he just took all of them and put them in the guest room and they were trying to convince him that he should talk to her about it and they should find a middle ground. And he was like, nah, I'm good. I don't even want that fight. I just put him in the guest bedroom. We good. That just tells me he's done trying. He's tapped out. All right? He's tapped out. Claire and Ryan. Oh, man. So Claire set up a tantric sex session. Yoga. Not, I'm sorry. Not tantric sex. I'm sorry. Tantric yoga. Which is based on tantric sex. If you're familiar with tantric sex, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not familiar, Google it. You'll know what I'm saying. And she thought that this was something that might open him up, bring them closer together. I mean, for lack of a better word, she was trying to get the man horny enough to have sex with her. Now, here's the thing. Ryan and Claire ain't, uh, ain't hard either, okay? They not hard either. If Ryan don't give her some soon, he gonna be divorced. And I don't blame her. I don't know what it is. But here's what I'm going to say to you, Claire. And I know this is all old and this is water under the bridge. But let me say this to you, boo. At the end of the episode, she's ranting. She's talking to the ladies and she's going on this rant about him not wanting to have sex with her. And she's not understanding what the big deal is. And, you know, if they've made a commitment that they're not going to have sex with anybody else, then why can't they have sex with each other? She said, and I'm getting him off every night and I'm not getting nothing. See, that's where you... Ding, 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 ding. That's the problem. That's the problem. For some people, foreplay is just that. It's foreplay. It is the appetizer to the entree. It is the beginning, you know, of the movie. For other people, foreplay is it. That's all I'm good. And Ryan clearly is the kind of man that he's done. So if you keep giving him the the on uh, the appetizer, and y'all are never getting to the entree, you got to stop giving him the appetizer. I mean, it don't make no sense to me. If you have figured out that he is one of those people that he's good with this part, 
without getting to the next part to stop giving him the first part. I'm just, it just, that's just it. That's all. You just can't do it. It's like your mama used to tell you when you was little, you can't have dessert until you eat dinner. Because if you eat dessert, you're not going to want dinner. Well, you can't do it. You can't. It's going to ruin your appetite. You can't do it. And at the end of the day, I have no idea why. What Ryan is waiting for. I don't know if he's not attracted to her that way. I don't know if he just doesn't like. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I ain't figured it out. And at this point, I really don't care. But Clara has every right to expect sex from her husband. Um, especially at this point. It's married at first sight, so everything is accelerated. I, I get it that in the beginning, you wanted to move slow. I respect that. But at this point... They said that we are less than two weeks away from making a decision, which means that y'all are three-fourths of the way through this process. If you're not comfortable enough with this woman that you're sleeping next to every night that you are doing everything with except inserting yourself inside of herself, then I don't know what else to say. And at this point, whatever you are waiting for, whatever bells and whistles that you are waiting to happen, whatever whatever that you're waiting to fall out of the sky it ain't coming ryan it just ain't coming so you just ain't feeling her sexually and it's okay to say that um but i get this couple of 50 50 chance because i think they like each other and i think that they they have some really good things going on but honestly i just think that ryan you need to figure it out boo you're gonna be in trouble okay Paige and chris listen I think Paige has finally come around to realizing that Chris is an asshole and that he was never going to give her what she wanted. She said that she got so caught up in the idea of marriage that she lost herself in the process and she tried so hard to make this work because she felt like God brought them together, the, the experts brought them together, that there had to be something there and she has finally accepted that this is just not the one. He ain't the one. He ain't the answer. And this process, I guess, just wasn't for her. Um, now, something she said that I thought was very curious. At one point, the ladies, uh, her, uh, Brianna, and um, Virginia were talking about mental health and therapy. We're going to get to Virginia and Brian in a minute. Um, but they, they were talking about mental health and therapy and things of that nature. And she said, yeah, I, I really do believe in uh, mental health. Um um, therapy, she said, I, I have two therapists. But then, in the very next sentence, Bree said, Brianna said that she had only been to therapy one time, and that was at the beginning of this process, because she was like, I need to make sure I knew who I was before I went, walked into marriage with somebody else. And Paige turns around and says, I wish I had done that. That was a good idea. Well, what the hell did you talk to your two therapists about if you ain't talked to them about getting married and figuring out who you were, what have you been going to therapy for, man? And you got two of them. So, and I'm not making fun of therapy because I think therapy is very important. But clearly, you ain't asking the right questions or having the right conversation. or figure, What are you doing in therapy with two therapists? That it didn't occur to you that maybe you should figure out who you are before you decide to be with somebody else. Girl, Paige, I cannot with you. And I really don't think Paige is a bad person at all. I really don't. But, girl. Anyway, I was just glad to hear her say that she was moving on. Now, I don't know what the rest of these episodes are going to tell me. But at least in this episode, I was here for you. I was here for you, Paige. We saw Chris have lunch, dinner with his mama. And he told his mama what's going on and that he wants a divorce and that he's done with it. And his mama was like, well, do you blame her? Like, I, he, she said, Paige is a really nice woman, but I can't blame her. Like, look at what you done done. And I don't think that's what Chris wanted to hear. So, y'all know how Chris gets. When people don't tell him what he wants to hear, he sort of shuts down. So, he didn't really have a whole lot to say after that. That was pretty much that. Now, let's get to Eric and Virginia. They was fighting almost this whole episode. One, about her dog. And two, once again, we're dealing with him and his, I don't, his, it's his insecurities. She said they were out at the bar. She got her to go to the bathroom. He said she was gone like 40 minutes. She was like, I went to the bathroom and then I went to the bar to get a drink. Now, here's what I'm going to say about that. 
if you are at a bar and it is busy and it is crowded now mind you this was during covid but i'm gonna go ahead and let y'all have it y'all was at the bar and it was busy i'm gonna go ahead and just walk down that road because it is atlanta and atlanta just act like covid didn't exist so we're just gonna skip right over that we're gonna keep going legit you can be at the bar go to the bathroom it's always a line in the ladies room that's a 10 minute trip easy going to the bathroom and then you stop by the bar to get a drink if they're busy if that you know you got to get the bartender's attention you gotta can i get and he making four or five other drinks and he or she gotta pour you a drink listen it is not un it is not unrealistic i just a double negative y'all know what i'm saying for it to take a 30 40 minute trip to go to the bathroom stop and get a drink from the bar and get back now she, and she was a good boy she said well if you was that concerned and that worried about where i was you ain't call me you ain't text me to ask if i was okay to see where i was so it cannot possibly be that much it could not possibly have been that much of a concern for you because i i don't remember my phone ringing i don't remember nobody coming through saying ma'am ma'am and ma'am then it was the whole dog situation he's telling her basically he was telling her listen your dog the dog's manners are out of order and i think we need to get him some training now she took that as a personal attack that her dog is out of control she was like he doesn't have anything wrong with, he doesn't feel like anything is wrong with his dog it's always my dog it's all everything is about my dog my dog my dog i feel like he's just attacking me and attacking my dog and attack 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 and he was like, listen, there are just some things that I think your dog does that aren't cool. Like when people are, he jumps up on people. That's not cool. He bites people. That's not cool. Listen, even if it's a nice bite, a yip, 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 you come across the wrong person, teeth making contact with skin equals lawsuit. And so he's not wrong to say these are the things that we need to do. Um let's just take him and get training like let's just take him to the pet smart to the classes and get him some some training like i don't see what the problem is she acted like this man told her that she had to send her dog away and put to sleep and i know people are very sensitive about their pets i get it but i didn't think what he was saying was ridiculous um and then she was saying well when i was depressed this was you know he saved my life and i just feel like he's attacking me and he's attacking my dog and i it just it, and then that's when she was having the conversation with the ladies about the mental health situation and and how he doesn't understand and people who and my anxiety has just been on overload throughout this whole process and so with all of that being said i honestly truly feel like Part of this is her dealing with anxiety and not and not just about the dog. Like I think the dog is the excuse, but not the whole thing. And so I say all that to say, I don't know she's going to have to give up some stuff and she's going to have to trust him and she's going to have to lean into the fact like the fact that she doesn't want to move into his place after you know the process is over the fact that she doesn't want to accept the fact that it is their dog now and not her dog now like she's going to have to learn how to let go of some stuff like she's just going to have to now again they made a big deal about the dog in this episode but i again i feel like the dog is just a catalyst and not the whole thing y'all understand what i'm saying anyway that's it i'm just going through the couples um i know that i'm behind y'all so i'm gonna go ahead and get caught up and i apologize for being so behind with this series um but we're gonna get we we're we gonna get caught up we're gonna get caught up and hopefully we'll see what happens with these couples but anyway right now i feel like we are looking at two and a half couples that's a wrap chris and Paige is a wrap I'm pretty certain that Jake and Haley is a wrap, okay? Uh, Brian and Virginia is 50-50. And Clara and uh, Ryan is 50-50. If Ryan don't start giving her the D, okay? Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.